जिसकी रचना इतनी सुंदर ओ कितना सुंदर होगा जिसकी रचना इतनी सुंदर ओ कितना सुंदर होगा ओ कितना सुंदर होगा एनी इज एनी बड़ी हियर हू कैन ट्रांसलेट इट जिसकी रचना इतनी सुंदर द वन हुज क्रिएशन इज सो ब्यूटिफुल हाउ ब्यूटिफुल सी और ही मस्ट बी सुभाष जिसकी रचना इतनी सुंदर न द क्रिएटर हुज क्रिएशन इट सेल्फ इज सो ब्यूटिफुल हाउ ब्यूटिफुल द क्रिएटर मस्ट बी वी फॉर गेट दिस थिंग the result our life becomes just a long long string of complaints okay i had a rough childhood i did not get along with my siblings we grew up on such and such things the place i was born school system virtually didn't exist or it was horrible oh in my school there was a teacher so bad we used to call him mr butcher okay i have heard all these things you know this is real expressions just to imagine how much <laughs> inflammation we must be creating on our soul let alone on our body and mind these days kaya kalpa kaya kalpa so i'm always in kaya kalpic mood you know inflammation and impurities toxins and therefore detoxification and rejuvenation of the body vitality brilliance you know radiance etc etc yeah. by the time i created the first 10 uh, sessions i thought my god it's just here is problem here is solution here is problem here is solution can we ever come to an end if we just go on making the list of our problems and discovering the solutions to each and every problem has it ever happened in the world okay almost 32 Hundred years ago, thirty-three hundred years ago, Moses came, worked very hard, so hard, so hard that he himself got worn out. Forty years of absolute practice with complete determination when he was when he went into the wilderness. Poor mind comes back to this world. guiding helping etc etc finally loses his temper <coughs> he threw the tablet that he had received krishna whole life just like moses krishna also lived as the scripture say 120 years the day he was born there was a problem and continuous discovery and distribution of the solution that was his lifelong job no god incarnates and comes to this world so that he can give solution to our problems krishna did rama did moses did christ did mahatma gandhi did george washington did abraham lincoln did world war 1 did world war 2 did okay all these so called all these big big historic events that we see on the pages of the history 
they were actually not in attempt to create problem but to solve problem you know that which seems to be so horrible so we think that had the world war not happened life would have been better but the truth is those who went that far to set up the war they did it the war was in attempt to find a solution to the problems that existed the war did not war, war was not created to create a problem but rather to solve it, to find a solution to the problems that existed and that is going on forever and yet problems are there continuous search for solutions are there it will be perhaps very arrogant of me to say that christ failed not just arrogant completely ignoramus you know to say christ failed krishna failed mahatma gandhi failed abraham lincoln failed everybody failed that will be i think definitely you know extremely um arrogant of me that will say such things but the truth is that it is only after we are able to minimize the lists of our complaints we begin to find a ground from where we can start our quest toward health wealth peace and happiness okay and that begins with seeing something good in ourselves in others even if we look at there is a way of looking at the world war 2 if we allow negative destructive aspect of our mind to look at all the bad bad things in let's say world war 2 or mahatma gandhi you no know, rama you know i have here re- residents today i will not hesitate to tell you who i'm referring to i'm referring to aradhana Irene Petrzak I used to poke at her you know by saying by twisting the great epic the first epic that was that ever was written you no know, in our human history that's called ramayana where I did very good job I thought that I did very good job to find flaw in rama you know so i told her that what kind of fellow he was yeah hindus worship him he is lord rama what lord rama first thing his wife after 10 months of being abducted finally when he rama finds her he asked her agni pariksha the fire test you know walk through the fire and prove your purity sanctity okay and someone even she did it was it correct <clears throat> she just smiled i said my god what kind of head is she carrying on her shoulders you know i'm here i'm trained logician i studied indian logic the the logic the system of philosophy called nyaya vaisheshika 
and I went further into the Buddhist philosophy and the logic which has come to perfection. And then Western logic, I was using all that. I'm just giving you a summary. I couldn't penetrate her beautiful head. Okay? My all negative, you know, arguments were just bouncing off her beautiful head. Next point I had. Of course, I was on the side of Sita, Rama's wife. I was trying to see, to, to demonstrate that here is how wonderful, beautiful, how much patience, how much love, and etc., etc. She had, and the contrast was Rama, her husband, itself. <coughs> Second argument, that as I don't know how many of you know this story, Rama is coronated after all that war and so much destruction and all that thing. So Rama one day, one day Rama heard a washer man arguing with his wife and asked her, get out from this home. Because the thing was, one day this washerman's wife went somewhere, came back very late. Or let's say whole night, I think, she was missing. Following day when she came, so the washerman said, get out from here. I'm not like Rama, who, you know, who whose wife is abducted and then when she comes back again, you know, so gracefully and so, with so much pomp and so, gives her place on his left side on the throne. Somewhere people told Rama that this is kind of rumor is going on. So Rama says, now exile Sita. Is it that sort of character of Rama is? Aradhana did not buy my argument. Rather, she had long list of goodness, 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 goodness. Rama, Sita, everyone, whole Ramayana, whole Ramayana. That book is just a, a beautiful bouquet of you know, flowers. Not just a bouquet, rather a garden, beautiful garden. Not just an ordinary garden, the celestial garden that has been translated into poem and poetry. That's called Ramayana. I said, wow. Even if we have just a few thousand of aradhanas like that, I'm telling you the conditions that which leads us to war, fight, etc., that will vanish. That's the power of seeing goodness and beauty. We are taught when uh, we grow up, there is such a natural tendency in us to see beauty in our loved ones. A child never ever, you know, no, no matter how the mother looks like, we have a standard of so-called aesthetics, beauty, fashion. There are certain standards that have been kind of established in order to assess who is Miss World, Miss Queen, and Miss Cosmos, and Miss Universe. <laughs> no? We have that. Based on that, then we judge. What about a baby? Who is the most beautiful person in the whole world? Mom. Hmm? When child is happy, playing with mom. Child is in pain, cries and just looks at mom. Okay? Then, comes to place of grandfather also. <laughs> you know? You know? So child doesn't look at the shape and size of my tummy. <laughs> no? My grandchildren don't look at that. Okay? 
I'm beautiful just because I'm beautiful. That's it, finished. Who is teaching that child to have unconditional love for her mom, love for her father, love for her grandparents, and love for that house that stands still. Everything in the world is continuously changing. All philosophers so far have been telling us that everything is transitory. But you know what is not transitory? That which is, un that which is unchanging in the world, world? My house. You know? For the last 42 years, it's the same house. Three generations have gone through. And it's very beautiful. So beautiful that everybody congregates there. That's place of congregation. It's only because it's beautiful. What is so beautiful about it? Is it as grand, fitted with amenities, as some of those fancy houses? In California's Orange County. If you want to see world's unsurpassed and most unique art, come and look at my coffee table that sits in my living room. It's all beaten up. Sometimes, you know, these children, they have beat it, they have pounded it, and most beautiful thing is that my coffee table has not yet been completely destroyed. Okay? And yet it is beautiful. That's why everybody runs. By the time, you know, here, so many People in the world, in the search of peace and happiness, they go Bali. They look at the beach, the best beach, best rock formation, and they go to you know, Sahara, Desert, or they go to Japan, they go to God knows where. There is excitement and there is a thrill to go to moon or outer space. It's only $25 million, not a big deal. No? And yet there is an amazing sense of understanding. The best place, my two and a half year old granddaughter sneaks out from her mom's bed five in the morning and we know that it will be total chaos. The kind of pain I will create if our door is locked. So therefore our door is never, never ever locked. Five in the morning, I'm sitting doing my practice. I felt some small creature <laughs> moving in. It is my granddaughter. My another granddaughter who lived upstairs and cries somehow two in the morning. Suddenly she decides that she wants to sleep downstairs with Mira, grandma, grandpa. Why? Because it's very beautiful. What is so beautiful? There is a bond between two people. That bond is very beautiful. And wherever, that's what locus is all about. Locus, substratum. No? So now let's go into a little deeper. There is substratum. Substratum is always, in highest sense, it is completely abstract but around that abstract formless nameless substrate uh, substratum all the attributes arrange themselves just as nameless formless just as around a nameless formless gravitational force all the 
you know, tiny, tiny pieces of iron arrange themselves. Okay? That's what our most subtle feelings are all about. It's not a crying baby, it's not a smiling baby. It's not the grandfather or grandmother or mother or father or friends who have certain things or certain kind of expressions have been made or expectations have been built. That's what <coughs> causes the two people to, uh, to be drawn toward each other. No, that is too gross. That is too gross. <coughs> the, subtle th the subtlest of all things that brings us together and creates that sense of beauty and joy is extremely subtle. It's just a matter of changing our attitude and cultivating a different way of seeing things than we are normally used to. Okay. So, I have seen this thing in many times, many situations. When I was growing up, <coughs> just as anybody else takes for granted what parents are, mothers are, your surroundings are, your schools are, your trees and your rivers and your hand pumps or your um, you know, water faucet. Those things, we take it for granted. You know, your rug, your wall hangings, it's there. You grow up with. It's not a very big deal. You know? It's not a very big deal. And, uh, but there are times in life when then suddenly you notice that wow, there is something very profound, very deep. So I'll share with you just a few anecdotes. It was 1973. I was in second year of college, which I have written in one of my books, this touched by fire, this incident. I was very, very much despondent, fed up, disgusted. At that time, all I could see, this unkind, Uncompassionate, merciless, uh, game of destiny, which completely unjustfully walked into my life and made my life miserable. That's all I could see. As a result, everything went, everything looked ugly, totally ugly. However, there are few other strands of thoughts and feelings kind of popping up too. But they are totally unconscious. I wanted to run away from this ugly world. But what about my sisters? They will feel bad. My aging parents will die untimely, but you know, from untimely death. Therefore, on one hand, just run away from here. But no, 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 this is not. Look at this person, look at that person. You know. So amazing. That by that time I had not read much about Buddha and all the details of Buddha. You know, living in an environment which was quite uh, very solid Hindu environment. Buddha and Buddhism were not somewhere in the top priority of being good people or you know, good religion at that time. So my own circumstances were affecting my own mind and I, all I was aware of, my own personal circumstances. 
under that circumstance, finally, I somehow, I gathered my courage or completely lost my courage, whatever God knows how to describe it. And that's why there are circumstances, sometimes it, they are indescribable. So, I had some money. I got off the, I cut my bus, came to a certain point from my home to the district headquarters called Prathapgarh. Then from there I took a uh, train to come to Allahabad. By that time I had decided to quit. Well, I had pajama, kurta, and some nylon bag, walking. I walked out of the train, walking through the railway station, lots of beggars. Babuji, uh, Babuji, asking for. Thought came that, yeah, I think I have a couple of rupees. How long this couple of rupees, which is hardly quarter of a dollar or two dollars, something like that, one dollar. And there are 20 of those beggars. In that state of mind, I pulled out my one rupee bill, I gave it to somebody. Other beggars, beggars thought that I was rich. They followed me, so I gave half rupee to this person, another to some person. Then, I took off my shirt. I gave to this person. That was very heavy. And when I pulled off my pajama, <laughs> then they realized, oh my God, this fellow must be, no, <laughs> no. This started. So by that time, my pajama was out and I had flip-flop. I just took off my fifla, but yeah, take, take it, this one also, with my one underwear. Started walking toward Ganga. It was around two, three miles from there. By the time I reached there, it became dark, it was difficult to walk, Ganga was also flooded. So in the night, it was hot, but however, as soon as you are close the river and night dawns, you know, and it was Navratri time, which is about to come in month of October, when we start our Sri Sutta stage two. Shocking, how many years ago? 50 years ago, it will be 50 years exactly, 1973, you know, late September. And here comes 2023. So, whole night I was suffering. Cold, shivering, hugging the tree, not realizing that on flooded Ganga, all the scorpions and all the insects and all the you know, snakes, they try to find little higher ground, you know. And it is in that environment I spent time hungry, tired, fatigued, frozen. And then I walked, hardly I walked, maybe 100 meters, that's when I saw it. A sage, a master sitting there, whom I never knew who he was. His demeanor told me that he was a person. So every thought flashed in my mind, and this is what I, it, it's a poem uh, <coughs> written by one of the saints. Sant Milan ko jaye, taj mamata abhiman, jiyo jiyo pag aage barhe, koti ne yagya saman. When you are on this path, Sant Milan ko jaye. Try your best to take part in satsanga as much as you can. However, with a mind, which is Taj Mamata Abhiman, with a mind which is free from distorted sense of self-identity and ego, arrogance, Vanity, hubris. Jiyo jiyo pag aage barhe. Every single step you put, every single step you take in order to reach to that satsanga, to meet a saint, 
कोटिन यज्ञ समान एवरी स्टेप इज इक्वल टू हंड्रेड्स ऑफ योर ग्रेट ग्रैंड एक्ट ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल प्रैक्टिस एंड द मेरिट्स वी गेन फ्रॉम स्पिरिचुअल प्रैक्टिस वेल सेंट इज सिटिंग हेयर आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू आस्क फॉर एनी थिंग हाउ एवर जस्ट टू हैव ए ग्लैंस ऑफ हिज लोटस फीट एंड कंटिन्यू वन आई रीच देयर आई बाउट माई हेड ही स्पोक इन संस्कृत लैंग्वेज टोटली अनकॉमन in modern india because this language has not been spoken language at least for a couple of thousand years kastvam the sweetness that was there okay my god so much sweetness so much sweetness it just like suddenly it melted you know my all burden all that you know that dark cloud that was hovering over my head custom normal translation ka sanskrit language is very amazing same it could have multiple multiple meaning of the same sentence same word custom ka means who tum who are you okay who are you so i told him i first thing i surprised wow somebody sits here just a tiny little lion cloth and who looked like just like mahatma gandhi bundle of bones that set covered with thin skin so i took i replied to him in sanskrit language na niratishay deen hin अत्यखल प्रयाग विश्वविद्यालय एक निरीहत छात्र आई एम वन ऑफ द मोस्ट पिटीफुल हेल्पलेस पावरलेस स्टूडेंट हियर एट द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ अलाहाबाद दैट्स इट ही सेड कस्तम अगेन हु आर यू दैट्स व्हाट आई हर्ड द मीनिंग I said, I just told you. He said, "Nahi, nahi, no, 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 kastam." The ka means creator. The word ka means creator. The letter ka also means, you know, the fundamental principle of desire, fundamental principle of will, will power, and determination. and the primordial master of shri vidya mantra bhagwan dakshina murti himself so he said no nahi nahi no not that not that kastam you are kah so it's other kastam it's not a question mark it's not interrogative sentence it's a affirmative sentence statement kastam you are that you are kah i just it's like my god it's like a a lightning bolt of joy pleasure overwhelming experience everything somebody is telling me i am the finest creation of the creator and where after having created me the creator lives in me and therefore that tomasi on that just i was shocked so please take this portion of the conversation to your heart okay here is a person who according to modern psychology is very well on his way to commit suicide it's called suicidal it's a tendency suicidal tendency which was there out of frustration disappointment and no more trust in anyone and anybody including the so called destiny and you cannot call that kind of destiny divine providence because if we know a difference between or let's say if we have any sense that whatever we call destiny has a divine element in it then it's not a punishment at all to begin with 
it's done okay but normally oh it's our karma without really knowing much about the fundamental principles or the dynamics of karma so ah, perhaps i'm reaping the fruits of my karma okay then he said next sentence gayatri janasi in sanskrit do you know gayatri mantra by that time i had become alert don't consider simple sounding question to be that simple so i told him i do not know whether i really know it but whatever i know according to that i do it that's exactly i answered daro nahi don't be sad don't be fearful and i said how to really touch exactly what you are saying i'm hearing it but i'm not able to touch it i'm not able to feel it i'm not able to lay my fingers on it he said all these things you will come to know through a teacher my question was who is teacher as then he said in reality almighty divine being is our teacher and it is under the guidance of that teacher someone something walks as a teacher into our life but the truth is no one other than the giver of our life is a teacher as time passed he explained those who consider themselves to be teacher they do it only because they are ignorant okay. those who are constantly aware of the giver of life and as an instrument of that giver of life or guided by that giver of life they continue doing whatever seems to be the best they are seekers and whatever they feel spontaneously inspired to do that's called teaching spirit you know the true giver so there is another beautiful passage <coughs> there was a muslim saint his name was rahim he was known for his generosity so same time there was another saint tulsidas the author of modern hindi version of ramayana so one day tulsidas the author of hindi version of ramayana this saint sent a note that o rahim you are ah uh, such a great giver rahim was known every day uh, after taking bath getting fresh rahim used to sit outside his own home do- do- door and anybody passing in anything asked he had certain amount of wealth and he was very favorite of the king akbar the the emperor akbar therefore he used to get good amount of honorarium for being you no know, one of the members of the court of the emperor so whatever he used to get he used to just give away anything he got at then by the end of the day it must be finished by next day morning so that's so he was known for his generosity but however he he had a style of giving somebody is coming so somebody asks for so it goes like this with his head bent so tulsi das said in his note o rahim what are you embarrassed of that you never you know uh, lift your head and look into the eyes of the receiver whomever you give your 
whomever, whomever you dispense your love and generosity. Are you ashamed of something, embarrassed of something? So Tulsi, then Rahim wrote back with the same messenger. True giver is someone else. But people identify me as a giver. That makes me so embarrassed. That's why I have, you know, that's why I can't look into the eyes of those who are receiving from the true giver. See here, these are very subtle points. In life we forget. My own personal journey began in a somewhat official sense after that incident when the saint said, Kastom, who are you? And then he reversed the meaning, you know, that it's not an interrogative sentence, but rather it is an affirmative sentence. That you are Ka, you know, creator's creation with so much, you know, the creator created you with so much love that he could not part himself from you. You know, he loves children make sometimes when, like uh, just a couple of, two days ago, my one of my granddaughter, very fond of Yasmin somewhere, must she must be here. Yes, Yasmin. So uh, Yasmin is coming, she got excited, so immediately she made a very, very fantastic piece of art for Yasmin. Running around, running around, she was totally restless. That restless was, restlessness was caused by her own in, inner joy of thinking Yasmin, Yasmin, Yasmin. And that piece of art was very, very precious. We may not see how precious and how beautiful it is in our mind. It's the best piece, you know, Michelangelo, nowhere close to <laughs> that, you know, piece of art, you know. And uh, okay. so, this is what we are. We are so precious, so precious, that after we were created, God himself, she herself fell in love with us. Oh my God! I did it! I did it! Shiva, do you see? I did it! You know, best place to live. Not on Mount Kailas. Some sages suggested, maybe Varanasi. Some said, Maybe in the ocean of Ambrosia, some suggested. No, 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 no. In a temple built of gold. So, no, no, somewhere. In totally different galaxy. And the creator said, Allah, if you are still in need of more practice, more meditation. <coughs> Sages were shocked. He said, sir, then what is the best place? He said, this human being. And that is how as Sutra 334 tells us, right there, 334, Yoga Sutra 334, Saundar Lahari, you know, 38, Samunu Meelat Sambit Kamala Makarandai Karasikam. You know, so my little swan is, you know, swimming in the lake of Amrit, Imbrosia. My God, look at my duck. Look at, look at this, you know, swan. Immediately, our creator becomes another swan. He couldn't, it's not that he was, you know, in part, he felt that I was by myself. In part, he couldn't really bear the pain of being away from me. So he took exact same form, same name, Nam Samyam, Rupa Samyam. Same name, same form, same size, same color, same taste. No? Whatever his quote original form name and that is 
secondary to him you know he likes my name my form my shape my size so much so much that he quits that part or maybe since he is god he can be in two places simultaneously that's okay you know that was also all right you know but definitely is there okay that's what life is all about if we begin to see if we begin to understand see and if we start exhibiting this understanding into our day to day life just imagine what kind of world will be all around us and what could be better service to this whole world to leave behind a world that has been so consistently and so constantly seen by the seer the primordial seer himself okay wherever we are you go on the beaches where in a kind of hodgepodge way fishermen bring their fish clean and leave that beach how horrible it is to walk on that beach you know and that strong smell is there okay and how beautiful the other places are in the night time when after our a uh, hawan fire offering was done when i was coming out i just looked at oh, my god do we really need do we really care to know that there is any heaven somewhere after just i just me and myself just looked around our eyes are limited our capacity to experience capacity to uh, the experiencing something is limited therefore why should i really bother to know and care why should i care that there is a heaven because even the total beauty of my own you know total beauty surrounding the entire shrine was not fitting in my eyes that was too much so i had to see this corner then go on this side then the other side so i'm just standing there and going like this and while seeing that beauty i'm just i was able to see but i was not able to touch i was not able to smell i was not able to just you know articulate it how limited are our senses therefore why should we really bother to to even uh, um, attempt that there is a very 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 beautiful place however we can really have access to that beautiful place only when we are dead <laughs> everybody is telling for thousands of years all over the planet throughout the history people are telling us that there is heaven how many of us are really willing to go to heaven right now i am not inspiring you because if i do that <laughs> i'll go to jail right away <laughs> okay but even let's say on your own how many of you will refuse to go to doctor at the prospect of dying so that you can go to heaven you tell me how much energy human beings so far have put into building a monastery or building a place where you can find right kind of atmosphere for your inner quest compared to how much energy we have put into building universities and colleges and medical colleges and hospitals how much energy we ha have we put into discovering scientific tools and means to discover our own atman compared to the amount of energy we have put into our so called all these different technologies including our you know ai and vr run robotics okay so why is that how much energy we have put into making sure that we continue to exist here as long as possible and hopefully permanently forever that's where our energy is going it means unconsciously we know that there is something very beautiful and very precious out there fact 
that not a single Swami, Guru, Pandit, priest, and you know, any church, mosque, you know, and temple has been more powerful than us. Why? Because what they are telling does not really ring very well. So all these great, 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 great so-called people in the world on one side and our own willpower and determination, our own uh, uh, will and our own desire on this side. So, so many, these great souls, incarnated souls, they are telling that this world is full of bondage. Run away, my children, as quickly as possible. And in fact, read Bhagavad Gita, read the Vedas, Upanishads. And here is the Bible. In fact, here is even much more simpler solution to find freedom from here. What is that? Just pay me $10,000 for the, you know, one session and I will take you through such and such quest. And I will do, I will read the all, all of your Akashic, Akashic, you know, records. Now I will tell you exactly that which particular corner of the heaven you have come from and how to reach there while avoiding the hell. And all it costs only $10,000. All those. But have we stopped making our attempts to live in this world and be here? No. Why? Why? Because there is an amazing intelligence here tells us that you are thin or you are thick. You are old or you are young. You are Easterner or you are Westerner. You are he or you are she or you are they. Regardless of anything, there is something definitely true that how comfortable how beautiful skin you have and being comfortable in that skin is so wonderful. We know it. We know it. <coughs> Therefore, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Krishna, for passing on the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. That please, but however, please, Give me your blessings so that I can stay here a little longer. Okay? No one prays for quick exit. No? no one ever prays for quick exit. Why? Because here are how the sages say. Ya atma da balada yasya vishram. There is a giver of our identity always with us. It starts from, let's say, if whoever there is there, whatever that form, that reality, that truth, that creator is, made sure. Like, you know, I have my watch here. This is motion sensitive watch. It moves, it tells me the time only as long as it has ability to move. And but that movement comes from my own hand. I'm moving around when I put it. Uh, maybe six, seven hours, eight hours later, it's dead. It means it doesn't work. Spanda, right? First thing, the conception takes place. Suddenly things start moving. Why somebody, the source of spanda, pulsation is there. Or the giver gives the fundamental elements, substance we need for the force of pulsation to descend into it that we did not do by ourselves. Somebody else did it. That is creator. One who is constantly 
monitoring and making sure you know that all the faculties of mom mother after that are you know, contributing to this process of growth of the fetus it that monitoring force is called ishwara has it not been in the mother even in test tube babies there is intelligence there is ishwara there was ishwara in the minds of hearts of in the intelligence intellect of those scientists those who designed came up with the idea of test tube babies okay cloning so this way we continue growing 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 mother's body is going through enormous change as guided by that inner intelligence we are born instinct is there to sleep longer time because it was very long journey super long journey you know when we come back from long trip 16 hour 15 hour long one flight is tiring and this one it is a journey from one plane of existence to another plane of existence and then we are born and therefore there is a force that makes sure that we recover from that exhaustion mother my god when you have tiny little tumor we go to hospital tiny little growth and here 40 pound additional growth baby and plus all the padding and all the nourishment all the liquid all the fluid and everything together it's almost 40 pound no over the size of a pea suddenly becomes so big it is and there is a joy amazing what is so joyful in labor pain and as soon as the baby is born and even there is you know the labor pain giving birth is equal to you know i have seen the, i have heard from the doctors they say you know that when you talk about from uh, uh, 1 to 10 you know the uh, scale the pain it is very very painful and yet along with that there is a stream of joy hope you know excitement so this world so beautiful so beautiful fruits are there vegetables are there just list can go on and on and on you know do we need somebody else to tell us the limitless form of manifestation of the higher div- divinity that's you know then other than just watch it just look at a tiny little plant how it grows becomes this big starts blossoming and then you look at just one tiny petal and look at the patterns look at the colors okay look at the fragrance and look at the process that's such a beautiful flower it drops its petals on the ground goes back to same soil from where it came from do we need big 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 scriptures and big big incarnated souls coming from seventh heaven and somewhere you know descending on the highest peak of the himalayas and alps to come and tell us that the creator of beauty itself the embodiment of beauty itself is all around us inside us and it has been in the past it has been in the present and it will continue to be in the future do we need somebody else to tell us just simply watch you know just one simple blossom of blossom of flower and that's what if we can do that 
Our entire spiritual quest is completed. Complaints are gone. So there is a very beautiful verse. It's one of the mantras. There is a scripture called Saundar Lahari, the wave of beauty and wave of bliss. And one of the verse is Tadiyam Saundarayam Tuhin Giri Kanye Tulayatum Kavindra Kalpante Pirachayati. So, Tuhin Giri. O daughter of the mountain covered with snow, Tuhin. Tuhin means uh, snow, ice. Glaciers. Tuhin Giri. Kanni. Kanniya means the daughter. So the poet, the, the Sankaracharya is sitting in Mount Kailas. He just enters deep, deep, deep Samadhi. While he was entering Samadhi, he was in a little bit rushed. He did not pay attention how beautiful things were all along the path leading to the Absolute Nirvikalpa Samadhi. So he was in rush to reach there. He reached there and then from that angle then he started seeing that everything is just absolutely beautiful. No bondage, no liberation, no past, no future, just present. There is no shape, there is no size, just one and the only one reality pervading the entire existence and that reality is the existence, is the existence. From that experience now, he's returning. He's right at the threshold of that absolute and just about to enter that which is, you know, finite. So he's somewhere, a space of consciousness where the infinite and the finite meet. And then from there, one leg, still into the infinite space of consciousness. Another one is just right here at the finite. And then from there he sees. He says, the daughter of the highest peak of this universe, Himalaya is representative of the highest peak of the universe, Sumeru Parvata. You know, it's not Mount Kailas that is in Tibet. Sumeru means very, very, very beautiful, absolutely beautiful Sumeru. You know, that which just holds that which is the, you know, the most, the, uh, you know, the that which is the core. There was a time when our science was still in its infancy, so they thought, well, the core of the earth is. This many mile big. Mister, that's not core. Core has to be absolutely abstract. It is still virtual. So just a recent. No, 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 no. Within that core, there is another core. 20 years from today. Oh, no. Can you believe that? New discovery. Someone is smarter than the one who had discovered another core. Someone is smarter than that. Nope. I just discovered the real core. 10,000 years from today, so this time I got it. No, I got it. So, that is Meru. Center of the universe, pure, absolute, unadulterated, unalloyed, pure consciousness. And someone just like at the tip of our mitochondria, Deep up our cell sits the mitochondria and mitochondria, oh, all that power, you know, power station, you know, back. So from there, so here is Tuhinigiri Kalli, that's what Divine Mother, Divine Mother sits at the, completely at the summit of that, you know, the most, you know, the primordial, you know, peak of consciousness, Sumeru Parvat. So Shankaracharya says, that's when just he was overwhelmed with the experience. And then he just like a, a flood of wisdom came through him, to him, and then through him started 
descending and thus it turned into the words tuhin giri kanne tulayatum wow human beings great great souls great poets great sages great masters great seers o tuhin giri kanne or the most beautiful you no know, phantom lady of the state of pure consciousness in attempt to comprehend in attempt to articulate thy beauty automatically the seers turn into poets that's where the mantras come from tuhi nigri kanni tulaiti kavindra kalpante the master poets kalpante they come up with not you know the their failure to really describe how beautiful you are they come up with simile and all kinds of figure up speeches try to get something to describe and communicate thy beauty and however just because by using whatever intellectual power emotional power power of imaginations they have by using all that they are trying to describe your beauty and that gives them opportunity to digest and assimilate what they are just trying to express as a result they become you and you become that that sort of power of absorption and assimilation is all about hmm? remember ishan and myself we just go on pounding pounding uh, assimilation absorption absorb assimilate assimilate you know <laughs> assimilate bisoka so that's what and the more we transform our attitude the more we start reminding ourselves here is our creator so skillfully so beautifully so kindly has entered his own creation and here is how i am the center of that creation not due to the arrogance or let's say ego i am saying that i am center of the universe you guys not you no 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 all of us are center of the universe if it's really just look at you have a globe and that globe is globe of infinity which particular spot in that globe of infinity is the center of the globe okay ask a mathematician perhaps mathematician will have a better language than i do to tell you that every single point of reference in that globe is center of the globe because the infinity itself is the center of infinity absolute itself is the center of the absolute this is what life is even a tiniest fraction of it this knowledge which i am talking to somehow settles in our mind and heart that is enough to take away our millions and millions of lifetimes nurtured and nourished you know fears we have been continuously you know kind of uh, uh, attending our avidya asmita raga dvesha avinivesha our ignorance our distorted sense of self identity our and our raga our attachment our aversion our fear and all that anger hatred jealousy greed you know and all of our actions created by propelled by our uh, internally held conflicts and contradictions all of that will just vanish even just it just a tiny fraction of this understanding is plenty swalpa mapyasya dharmasya trayate mahato bhayat that's what you know bhagavad gita and many many other scriptures and that swalpa mapi asya even though it sounds very very simple and very very small and at trayate mahato bhayat it just completely takes away our entire fear you know takes away our entire fear then we in our family in our society in our culture or we as a nations do not have actual reason to be afraid of each other at a much 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 bigger level definitely i don't say that um, um all these top leaders of the planet whether the top leaders of china india russia or united states of america they will reach a state where everything just fine and divine the world will never be you know a, a ugly place anymore but the thing is the quest always begins with ourselves 
you know, with ourselves. And uh, who knows if out of 350 million Americans, one turns out to be, you know, a person with this kind of fully digested knowledge. And by chance that person, if that's, that's how the divine providence really says, okay, now this person should reach the uh, 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 White House and this person should have the very big majority so that he doesn't have to be constantly beaten up by the, you know, all these, um, uh, oh, this 49-51 kind of, uh, although in democracy it's a good idea. In democracy, it's a good idea to have 51, 49 kind of, you know, balance. The absolute majority, not although there is nothing like absolute, but yes, super, super, super big majority is questionable, especially in Kali Yuga. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's better to have little pain than, you know, in the fantasy of having complete, absolute joy, ending up with utter chaos. You know? So, this is, it can happen. It has happened in our own little world. You know, we are happy. And then, there is a slug. We are happy people. We are established people. We are walking. We are walking. And we are just, just about to step on a slug. So, oh, oops. Walk this way. This is slug. Is it really that important to protect the slug? This can take an endless debate. <laughs> endless debate. You know? And yet... There is a spontaneous reaction. I have seen in nature's, one of the nature's show, an elephant, bunch of elephants were marching toward a lake in Africa. And suddenly, there was a frog and was just about, and, and the, the, somehow the, um, the elephant was just about to step it and it felt it, just lifted its foot and continued marching. Just imagine what kind of actions will be automatically, you know, will be, it's not, it's just, it will just happen by itself. It's tiny little frog. It's Bangladesh. It's a tiny little Islamic community in a Hindu or Christian, you know, majority you know, nation. It's a tiny little, you know, uh, uh, wilder beast. You are a mighty fellow walking and suddenly you saw something, you know, and you instantly you felt it's not that, oh, according to the Bible, according to Bhagavad Gita, you should not hurt anybody. No, it's, it just happens. That's the power of absorption, power of assimilation is all about. That's why we need to do the practice. We need to do, be on that path. We need to be continuously reminded we have to put aside a time to keep reinforcing, keep reinforcing, keep you know, reinforcing this ideology. Then what will happen? Definitely, one thing is guaranteed. If not very early, then definitely by the time we breathe our last, we'll be able to see and find and embrace the Creator in her creation. Therefore, let us cultivate a good, positive attitude. Thank you. God bless you all.